whether it was, you know, late night talk show hosts or Saturday Night Live or the news or the print media, everything else, we also saw at the same time exactly how much Superman meant to the world at large. And I think it was one of these rare times when fiction and reality blended together. Believe it or not, it has been 30 years since we did the death of Superman, and we have a very special project coming out this year to commemorate those days. So that's what we're here to talk about. For me, I grew up reading your Superman stories, and I was exactly the right age when Death of Superman hit. And what is it that you think makes this particular story kind of like the defining feature of the hundreds of Superman stories that you've written and illustrated in your time? Because I think it really addresses the importance of Superman in terms of how did he fit into the DC universe? What did he mean to all the other characters in the DCU? Be it Lois, be it Perry, be it his own parents at that time. And because of the way it played out in the real world where it got so much attention, whether it was, you know, late night talk show hosts or Saturday Night Live or the news or the print media, everything else, we also saw at the same time exactly how much Superman meant to the world at large. And I think it was one of these rare times when fiction and reality blended together. And there will never be anything like it again in comics, but that's, that's why it meant so much to Superman. It told us just how important this character was. You know, this has become, like I said, this is kind of like the defining feature of your run, but I'm always curious is there another story that you think, you know, is your personal favorite in your time as a, as a Superman creator? You know, I have a lot of stories that are personal. I don't know about a specific personal favorite, but I have many that were favorites and they're often the quieter issues, the one story type issues. We did one that dealt with drunk driving, for example, or my Christmas Metropolis mailbag stories. And, or even recently as we did the Superman rebirth stuff, when we brought John Kent into the world and gave Clark and Lois a son, because through John, we add to the tapestry overall of what Superman's life is. And, and I think that said something very specific about Clark and Lois. Part of that whole era of Superman comics, and, like, and again, when you revisited it during the, the Rebirth era in some ways, that really did feel like the first time in decades that the character was allowed to grow and there were new elements of the mythology being added. So it's kind of like a hallmark of what you've done with the character. And now here you are revisiting that classic story of 30 years ago. What is this new look at the death of Superman going to bring to the character and that story in particular? Well, I think in this one, what we really get to do is see it through young John Kent's eyes. John is not about nine years old in this story. And I, I think what's so important is, and, and this is what I told everybody as we started to, to create this book, is that this is for new readers ever, who weren't there 30 years ago, every bit as much it was for the readers who were there at the time. And so basically what is happening is the story opens up and it just happens to be the anniversary of Superman's death in Metropolis. And John Kent is in school one day, he and the family had just moved back to Metropolis and someone is in the classroom with a black armband on. And the teacher introduces him and says, uh, we have someone here to talk about the most famous day in the history of Metropolis, and that's the day that Superman died. The problem is, Lois and Clark had never explained it to John. He had no idea, because how do you tell a nine-year-old, your dad died, and oh, by the way, he also came back to life. And so John just sits there and his mouth falls open, and he says, what? And, and so that gets us into the story. And as we get to see it through John's eyes, that's how we see what happened in the past, but it's also seeing through John's eyes as the story plays out in the present, because there is a new threat in Metropolis, you know, get in his dad's way. And John even gets to name it. And this is a character called Doombreaker who has a bit of a relationship to Doomsday of sorts. So it's something new that comes to the story as well. And by seeing it through John's eyes, I think we can put a very different spin on how those days played out and how they play out this time. One of my favorite things about that era of Superman comics is 
all of the different creative teams that gave each of those books a very specific flavor. But you all managed to tell this incredible unified story. Now, it's my understanding that this new book reunites a lot of those creative teams. Do you want to do you want to run through some of that? I would love to because if that couldn't have happened, we wouldn't have done this book. It was essential that we got the creative teams back together who did the stories uh, at that time. So back then on Action Comics, we had Butch Geis and Roger Stern. They are back together to do a very special story here that involves The Guardian. On Man of Steel back then, we had Wheezy Simonson and John Bogdanov. So and good. So good. And they are back. And they do this wonderful story with John Henry Irons, who later, as part of the reign of Superman, became Steel. And here we get to see part of what inspired him to become Steel. And then also back then on Adventures of Superman, we had Tom Grummet and Jerry Ordway. And they're back and they do this very touching, wonderful story about Clark's parents who are seeing this all play out on TV, the death of their son and looking through a photo album to take us through Clark's life. So that's a very warm and very human story. And then on the main story, I'm writing and drawing it. Brett Breeding is inking it. It's Brett and I doing our first DC work together in probably 25 years or so. And it's just wonderful. We've been talking about getting in touch with these old feelings as we, which we didn't think was gonna happen. But as we're doing this stuff, it's taking us back as creators as well and, and getting us with in touch with stuff we had kind of forgotten about. Now that the death of Superman has been told in different media, you know, we've seen it in movies, we've seen it in animated movies, we've seen it referenced in kind of oblique ways in other stories. And now characters from this era are making their live action debut as well, including John Kent. Mm -hmm. So do you do you keep up with all of the Superman media that you know that you and all of these amazing creative teams have helped influence? Oh yeah, I try. And it has been so wonderful to see Doomsday, for example, and the story get referenced so many different ways in that different media, whether it's print, whether it's movies, whether it's TV, whether it's animation, whether it was a radio drama. I mean, to see it continually come about again has been a lot of fun because it really, I think, touches on just how important it was and what it meant to people at that time. You got a favorite? <clears throat> Okay, this is going to sound like an answer that was created to be diplomatic, and it's not. It's that each of these have their own strengths, and it's been fun to see each one and then compare the differences. If it was Batman versus Superman, uh, for example, it was seeing Doomsday on the big screen, but also seeing the individual scenes replicated from the books. If it was animation, where we got to, in the second attempt, go so far as to show us the return of Superman and the four Superman and that kind of thing. That was strong. Even seeing Doomsday on Smallville where they built kind of the rubber suit look was a lot of fun. And seeing Doomsday on Krypton recently was, was special. So that was the best one, the Krypton. it really looked good. I still wanted to yeah. see more, right? And so it's been fun to see all of these things realized because they have all had their own individual strengths. Look, I mean, how many times have you kind of revisited this? Because we had the death of, we had the death of Superman. We had Hunter Prey, mm -hmm. right? Like there was Day of Doom. Like you've had kind of all of these opportunities to revisit and expand on this story. At what point do you feel like you've said everything you've had to say, if not about that moment in time, well, maybe about that moment in time, because I have to imagine you've, you'll never feel like you've said everything you have to say about Superman. Right. I don't know the answer to that, Mike, because if you would have asked me, you know, back when I did Hunter Prey, did, did I ever foresee something that would happen, you know, 30 years down the road where we would try and build something around that? I probably would have said at that time, no, I couldn't have foreseen that. I think what you do is you take each individual story and judge it on its own merit and the worth that it has. And I think for this one, in a lot of ways, because of John and, and because he can take us through this journey where it's actually people in Metropolis saying, yeah, this was the most famous day in Metropolis's history. The whole, if, if you have Perry White and Jimmy Olsen there who say the whole world was paying attention to what was happening on our streets. Well, that really is for a, a sort of a metaphor for what comics were like at that moment where there were lines of people around every comic store waiting to buy this book because the whole world was looking at the death of Superman. So it has this sense of double meaning to it. And I think because we're built around that, we have something unique to say here. I think it's going to be fun for people who were there 
30 years ago and experience it. And I think it's going to be fun for people who weren't there to find out a little bit about what it was like. When you started recruiting all of these, you know, these classic creative teams to revisit this, did you feel some of that old Superman office like vibe again from when you guys used to do those summits 30 years ago? A little bit. But when it really started happening was when the work started coming in. So as the artwork was coming when well, first of all, it was the stories. And we kind of approached them and said, well, here are a couple of things you might consider for what your story could do. Because, you know, we, we tell them, here's the amount of real estate you're ha you'll have. Here's the page count. And we want you to say something important here. So maybe this one is about this. And maybe this one is about this. And we also said, and if you've got a better idea, tell us what it is. And it, so when the stories started to come in, where they would have these personal touches. So with Wheezy and John, touching on John Henry, uh, I, I think was so important. For Roger, who was so involved with The Guardian back in those days, and touching on that, same thing there. And certainly Jerry, who wrote so much about Clark's personal life, to touch on the Kents, that's when it really started to hit me that, yeah, we're kind of back and the band is back together again and they're all playing the same instruments. <laughs> Why don't you remind everybody when this is coming out? This is coming out in mid-November. The Death of Superman originally came out, I think, on November 17th, 1992. And so it's right around that time. I don't know the specific date, but it's, it's right around that time to really stay in touch with where we were back then. I can tell you exactly where I was when I read that comic. I was at my grandmother's apartment because I had come home from school and my dad, my dad picked me up and we were going to go to my grandmother's for dinner. And I said, look, we got to hit the comic shop before yep. we go there. And sure enough, and I read that on my grandmother's couch. And I was not like a little kid. I was a teenager. <laughs> and I was like, nothing else is happening until I read, until I read Superman 75. Right. And the, the question back then was, where were you when Superman died? And I want people to answer that same question again now. And that's why we're going to have this fun, special thing. I mean, back then... You know, we had the DC characters, the entire Justice League was wearing the black armbands. Everybody in Metropolis was wearing the black armbands. And the fun thing is we sold a book with black armbands so that if you walked in the comic store back then, the retailers and other uh, fans were wearing black armbands and be like, the greatest thing ever would be if we could do that again. And who knows, maybe, maybe we can. I wore a black armband to one of my track meets in November that year. All right. So <laughs> I didn't have a lot of friends. Uh, Dan, thank you so much. I can't wait to read this. Can't, see, can't wait to see what you have next. My pleasure, Mike. Thanks a lot. Thank you.